minkum and always a reminder for myself on abdukul ajis wa da'ifu, miskeen wa zalim jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. <coughs> so what we have uh, for questions, Shaykh we already talked. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi are the physical asa, ring and siwak that we have fake? I mean not activated? I feel far from achieving the realities you spoke about. Well faith is within the heart. You have to have faith but are they just going to put them there and start walking? No. This has to be faith within your heart in everything you do in Islam. So you have to build your faith, you have to believe and that faith is miraculous. So alhamdulillah keep practicing until you believe and increase yaqeen with the salawats, with the zikr, with the tafakkur and contemplation. Otherwise without faith all practices are empty. So that, that has to be the foundation is to build one's faith, to build their practices, to build their energies. And then inshaAllah they have an adab of the sunnah too, how to use your siwak, how to use your cane, where to put your cane. When you go to masjid you put your cane in front of you, flat on the ground. So there's a whole adab of everything of carrying the sunnah. Don't go to the washroom with your ring, put your ring to be covered. So all, all of these then have its own adab and etiquette so that to uphold the honour of the Holy Sunnah inshaAllah. So don't take the, the cane into facility with yourselves. You keep it out standing upright always and if you're praying you put it down flat, not on any cushion because if you accidentally sit it'll break. Other than that you keep it upright and leaning on something. You have your siwak in your pocket and you use your siwak, you keep your ring in your pocket if you're going to wash or you're in an inappropriate environment. So alhamdulillah these are the adabs <coughs> that build faith. So when we meditate, tafakkur, when we do our zikr, our awrads build. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our connection, then we wouldn't say things like that. But if you're just starting and think, I'm going to get a cane and tomorrow it's going to be filled with power. First we have to fill ourselves with power inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, the world is becoming increasingly negative. It's becoming harder to balance and find time for our practice. How can I attract the right kinds of energies to relieve the outside pressures? That was the first question we just answered. <coughs> that you know that the, f the focus is always the tafakkur, building our in inner energy. <clears throat> With the inner energy we have energy to do everything. So say I have a nice car and I uh, email the car is not moving, what's going on? But it's required to have a fuel source. So we talked the other night about the fuel source is all the ibadah and worshipness that Allah has given to us. An extra powerful fuel source is your durud sharif, your salawats. 
you're igniting the heart. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad because this is the dhikr of Allah Inna Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi So Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad is dhikr Allah is making. In Allah wa malaikatuhu that Allah and the angels, Allah verily myself and the angels they are commanded to make durood al-sharif. O you who believe you may also do durood al-sharif but it is an immense source of power <clears throat> and evilness and badness is prevalent everywhere and evilness and badness by its nature is to stop us from good deeds, stop us from praising, stop us from praying. That should be self-evident, that should be understood, that's kindergarten. So you have to know that that's the job of the devil to stop you in everything you do. Are you willing to fight him? If not lie down let him take you. But if you're willing to fight him then you come towards Islam. Because even when we're calling for salah, what you're saying? Hayya la salah, hayya la salah, but everyone in the room must be saying, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Why? Because, Ya Rabbi, I have no power, no help unless you call me to pray. Until you send your energy and qudra to me and call me to pray. Because this is a path of humility. That we have no ability to pray, we have no ability to do any worshipness if Allah not supporting, not sending. Allah says in Qur'an, I won't let my name to be mentioned in your home. Your home is your heart. Forget about your external home, He won't let you even mention His name in your home. <coughs> More dangerous is if He doesn't let you mention His name within your heart, that you even stop the ability to say such a thing, astaghfirullah. So means everything is a blessing from Allah it's a Divinely grace and that's why it's a path of humility. Please Ya Rabbi grant me the ability to pray, grant me the ability to do these durood sharif grant me the ability to do everything that's pleasing to you. Go out and give charity, sit and meditate and do good services, good deeds. <coughs> good deeds and sadaqah take away many difficulties. People have loaded themselves with all sorts of bacteria, spiritual bacteria, spiritual burdens. And what Allah gave to us? Sadaqah and zakah. Sadaqah small amount every day, why? To clean so that you don't have enormous amounts of bacteria. And zakah is a complete cleansing to take the burden of insan away. And that's why then the tariqah comes and teaches all these holy nights and all these, these nights that we do qurbans and we do sacrifices and all of these for what? To take away difficulties from myself and my family, most from those whom we love. Because we are doing actions and we're doing all the things that we can do. But there are younger ones and those whom you love that not capable, not doing. You must do for their sake and pray for their sake and do your salawats for their sake. It's one thing once you saved yourself but what about all those whom you love? You have to save them, give on their behalf, do on their behalf, make salawats on their behalf. <coughs> and then we understand then the reality of a shaykh that what they do then they do for themselves, they do for their families and then they do for their community and those whom are following them. And say, Ya Rabbi as you're saving me, save them and save all those whom have that love. So then it teaches us to be not selfish, selfless. And this is what Allah wants, be selfless. Means do as you do for yourself but do for others, pray for others, try to improve others inshaAllah. Then we, we are, we're gaining now an understanding and a reality. And all we talked about in the last few nights was to struggle. If you wanted to enter this way of siwak then you had to fight for the truth. If you wanted the 
companionship of Sayyidina Umar Farooq, then you have to fight for the truth, the truth within yourself, right? If you know something true in your heart and you don't want to stand for it and you just say, oh I'll, I'll let the falsehood go everywhere and I'll let the falsehood within me just take over, you can't. So the greatest fight is inside the no, I have to do this, I have to get up and pray, I have to wash, I have to do good deeds and I'm not going to let my devil overtake me and destroy my dunya and my akhirah. That was the system. And then Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was at the beginning that uh, free me from shaitan. And then somebody asked, well how would we know if we're even with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq? Which is a funny question, how would you know? Because he has you sitting here listening. If he didn't want you to know that reality you wouldn't be listening to this talk. Means these are the representatives of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq teaching you about Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. <laughs> you're going to doctor's office, <laughs> the doctor's giving you medical advice on how to treat your heart and then you come out saying, well I wonder how to treat my heart, oh, I gotta find a doctor. But it's the, the, the guides that are teaching you from their presence, then you must know that you're in their presence when they're teaching you. So it says, we made you to hear it, now do it, live by it, feel it and begin to understand the reality. If Allah didn't want you to hear that reality you would never hear it, right? Every name has a secret and every secret has a name. If Allah doesn't reveal to you something how would you ever find it? You're not a Prophet of Allah to get wahi and to get inspiration like that. So it means that Allah has to give us an opportunity and this is what we call Divine Grace and Rahmah, Allah's ni'mat that I'm searching internet and one day I hit the YouTube and I'm hearing, oh what are these realities of the Holy Companion? That they have an eternal reality and that they're always around us, why? Four companions drawing you into the Muhammadan haqqaiq. What we said now crypto was saying, are you in IT? No, most of our guys are IT, why? Why? Because it's so familiar to these Divine realities that are coming now, right? They quickly identify everything as this reality. And we described last night that with all these cryptos you have to continuously keep checking and being checked by servers. Continuously this, uh, this electronic device wants to check you as soon as you want to enter. Do you think then entering the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad you're not going to be checked? Yeah definitely you're going to be checked. So you're going to be checked by who? The great Siddiq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is going to come and check you. Are you truthful in your actions and your deeds? Have you given up satanic way and now coming towards Rahman? So this whole spiritual check is going to take place. As soon as I'm hearing that I have to know in my heart I've been enrolled into achieving that. Otherwise why Allah wanted you to hear it. But many will hear and leave because their nafs has, nafs has overtaken them. But the ones whom Allah grant a himmah <coughs> and an inner zeal to achieve it, then they heard it, they know that it's meant for them and they must achieve that reality. So you know that if you heard a reality from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq you're in that reality otherwise you would have never heard it, inshaAllah. Um, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how do we turn our thinking faculty off and use our heart faculty? Yeah, turn your head off. 
<coughs> like the tech guys were saying, there's a master unit and a dummy unit, right? Why? Why in the tech they're using master and dummy unit? Because there's got to be one computer that's processing and that computer may need a hundred different hard drive terminals but it doesn't want each of them to be processors. Send a command and then get a command back, no we're not doing it. Means the command has to go one way and go to all those units. So Allah gave us a heart and a head, the master, Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah, not Maghz al-Mu'min, Qalbul Mu'min. And then we were supposed to shut the head. So then our whole life is about how to build my heart energy, my faith, my practices, my salawat, my durood and keep fighting my head, la, la, la. So the first zikr in tariqah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Why? It goes up, la, don't use your head, ilaha illallah, nothing but Allah into the heart. Not only you do the dhikr of that but you recognize and realize your head is the abode of shaitan and in your head is where shaitan plays with us. Faith is in the heart, practices in the heart. So they learn how to not listen to their head, not listen to whispers coming into their head. That Allah give isharat into the heart, you get inspiration to do goodness and good deeds, your head tells you, don't do that, lower it, don't do like that much, do like this, do like that, don't listen to your head. The one who can control what comes to their heart and don't allow it to go to their head, then they become successful in building their faith. The one whom listens to their head loses all their faith. Because shaitan has a mimbar in the head, if he hears that you're listening he's going to give you khutbah every five minutes, don't do that, don't do like this, don't do that and he's listening, oh you're listening? So yeah of course, what next? Okay, I'm my butt <laughs> and then he give you talks until the person has absolutely no faith and they start to make really bad decisions because shaitan now got them. So the whole system is don't listen to your head. What does your head know? It's a piece of meat and it never seen anything outside. And it lies to your eyes based on conditioning. Has your head seen anything? Your brain? No, absolutely nothing. It's a piece of flesh encased in a bone, it doesn't see anything. It's all guessing. You've been conditioned to what colors and what colors mean and, and we've been conditioned into what's uh, good, what's bad, what's happy, what's sad. But the heart is through the soul. If you build the soul you can hear with your soul, you can see with your soul, you can feel with your soul and that's a level of haqq because the soul doesn't lie. If the soul begins to be built and what the soul feels, it knows what's right and what's wrong because the soul is from heavens. The soul when it begins to see, it begins to see the truth and not the, what the physical eyes are seeing of delusions. So it's a matter of a system in which to build for ourselves. We have to build our soul power and put down the ego power. And these are the practices, these are tafakkur, these are the salawas, these are the zikrs, these are all of these practices so that to build the power of the soul inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Should we give spirituality a break? when our OCD anxiety is high because that is creating more doubts? Yeah, OCD condition, yeah, you have to be very moderate in spiritual practices if there's a mental imbalance and to be under the care of a medical physician 
and if they require medicine to take your medicine. So it means that the spirituality doesn't compensate for that and doesn't repair that. Everything has to be balanced, it's three prongs that you have body, mind and soul. So if the body's not well doesn't mean you sit and meditate and you, you, you're going to repair your body. You have to take care of the body first, you have to take care of your mind first and then you begin to build the practices through the soul. But if the mind is not working, as soon as you try to build soul practices you're hallucinating and then becoming angry, violent and you're off keel, something's off. So it's not recommended. So definitely everything is to follow medical advice and to be grounded on all these platforms that our brain is, is working, the heart is working, the body's working, the spirit is working and not to induce through outside elements that uh, a lot of youth may be smoking and doing different things and that's going to have an extremely harmful effect upon the brain and the ability to, to, to function. And a lot of these now are inducing schizophrenia because they have a chemical in there that uh, th there's a reason why these horrific things are being legalized. If, if we understand this is not Allah's rahmah but it's coming from shaitan. So when shaitan releases things like this, why? To rip your mind apart and to rip you apart and so that you're not somebody who can go towards Allah and that you give yourself to all the lower dangers. So we pray that Allah dress us, bless us and guide us inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.